Uh, so uh, my name is Canon Matthews. I work for Google on Google Compute Engine doing memory virtualization. And I'm going to talk about demand paging. And in particular, I'm going to talk about demand paging when you have a lot of CPUs and uh, the difficulties of getting that to scale. Uh, so a high level summary, uh, we currently use a different implementation than user fault FD to do post copy live migration. Uh, we would like to adopt user fault FD. Uh, that's the upstream implementation. And, but parts of the architecture of it do not scale uh, extremely well when you have hundreds of CPUs. And so there's some more work that we need to do to get this to scale better. And I started investigating what that would take, and this is what I figured out. So uh, I'm going to start by talking about the background, what the problem uh, is in general, what migration is, if you're not super familiar with it, in particular what post copy live migration is, and then what user fault FD does, and how that works with live migration. And then look at how this scales with a lot of CPUs and see what I found out. Um, so the problem, the angle that I've come at this from is that uh, Google Compute Engine offers very large VMs uh, with 160 CPUs and almost four terabytes of RAM. And live migration is sort of a non-negotiable part of that product. Uh, the, we have to have migration, otherwise we have all these maintenance events and the PMs don't like us to not have migration. So we have to figure it out. Uh, and we wrote this different demand paging implementation that's diverged significantly from how upstream has done it. And this is a huge maintenance burden because we have to rebase these patches and it's unlikely that we're gonna be able to upstream them at this point because they're so different and we didn't upstream them first. Uh, but if we were able to switch to using user fault FD, we could remove a lot of these proprietary patches that are a maintenance burden. So, but first we have to get the performance to where it's acceptable for our needs. And so to talk about what post copy migration is, so, so live migration in general is we wanna move a running VM from one host to a, a new destination host. And we wanna minimize the disruption that the guest uh, experiences. And RAM is usually the biggest migratable state, and you can't just copy it all at once uh, when it gets really big, because that's not live. So uh, there's two approaches to this. There's pre-copy, where you copy memory in the background while vCPUs are running, and this minimizes disruption, but it's not guaranteed to ever finish. If the guest is dirtying a lot of memory, it can do it faster than you can keep up with it. So the other approach is doing post-copy migration, and you might do both of these, of course. Uh, in post-copy, you would then copy memory on demand. So you wait until a vCPU tries to access memory, you, move, you start running the VM on the next host, and then once a vCPU touches memory, you pause that vCPU and copy the memory in. And this will always eventually converge, but you have to interrupt the vCPUs a lot, so this is, has worse per vCPU performance. Um, so in practice, you might use both of these to do pre-copy until some point and then switch to post-copy. Uh, so then where does user fault FD come in? Uh, so user fault FD is a Linux memory management interface for handling page faults uh, in a user space program. And so mm -hmm. instead of having the kernel handle all the page faults, you can tell, create this file descriptor and register a section of memory with it and it will notify you on this file descriptor anytime there are certain types of paging events, in this case, page faults, uh, in that region. So you, you pull and read on this file descriptor, and it tells you that you need to copy some memory in, and you copy it in with an ioctl. That's this EOFFDIO copy um, from a separate thread. Uh, so for post copy, this works by having the guest memory marked as you have, to, you have to have a guest memory is not present. There's no page tables for it. And uh, when a vCPU accesses some memory, causes a page fault, and your handler thread gets notified, it requests the missing RAM from the first host, and then it's copied over the network, copied into memory using the IOCTL, and then when you 
copied in, the kernel user fault FD code will find the thread that was waiting on that section of memory and wake it up. And the VCV continues. Uh, and this is a little diagram. Um, so I was curious, how does this scale if you start adding lots and lots of CPUs? Uh, in particular, so Google doesn't use Quimio, and so I didn't, I don't really know very much about Quimio, and I don't, did not want to really get into debugging like user space, so I wanted to really look at the kernel interface specifically, so I tried to use a little micro benchmark around user fault FD itself. Um, and so I started 160 vCPUs with their own little disjoint memory section that all of the memory was not present. And uh, the guest code was just uh, like a loop that touches every page of memory and, and then exits. And so uh, I wanted to see how long it would take each vCPU to finish touching a block of memory if all of that memory was on demand. And this benchmark uh, sort of assumes that you have infinite network bandwidth. And so it causes a worst case stress on the handling code, uh, if that makes sense. Because there's no, the, the QPS you're getting in handling uh, requests is, is much faster than you might get in real life if everything is being slowed down by the network. Um, so uh, I did this with uh, four gigabytes per CPU, and I had just one uh, thread in user space handling faults to start with at a four kilobyte page size. And so with one CPU, you could get about uh, 200 megabytes a second, 220. Uh, just not very, not very fast. Uh, but that's not, this is you know, kind of a synthetic benchmark, but what was really disappointing was that it, if you started adding more CPUs, it, it scaled up until you got to four, and then it just really starts to trickle off. And uh, network bandwidth could easily be higher than, than this, about two gigabits. I mean, we have 100 gigabit NICs. You can't get 100 gigabits of data transfer, but faster than two. And so there's, there's room for improvement. Uh, so to, to sort of set the expectations that I, I wanted to get out of this uh, post-copy interface, we, I looked at what uh, Google is able to do currently with our implementation that we haven't upstreamed. And uh, it does better. But, uh, so this, this does it by exiting on page faults, which I can talk about later if people are curious. But uh, it, it needs to be a little bit, about two to four times as performant before we could jump to it. And so we're interested in trying to get it there. But it's not the only scaling problem. Uh, so another big scaling problem is uh, the MMU lock. So in the, in the KVM x86 MMU, there's this monolithic lock that's required for many things touching the EPT. And so during post-copy, uh, you have to do a lot of stuff to create these extended page table mappings. And uh, this is actually still, in, even in our implementation, is like 75% of execution time when you have 160 CPUs is spent waiting on the MMU lock. And this is, but this is a separate opportunity. I wanted to look at specifically with user fault FD though, why doesn't it scale at all if you add 160 CPUs? You only get a little bit a 30% improvement. Uh, and so I thought maybe you could add more uh, user space workers to make this faster, because one thread can only make these system calls so fast. Uh, could you simply add more threads? And uh, the answer is not really. Uh, if you start adding more threads uh, to make these system calls, every system call just starts taking longer. And that was, that was I found that curious. Uh, and also the CPU usage starts going uh, very high. Uh, but you don't really get any benefit from that. So I was really curious where this time was going. And uh, so I, I used the perf utility to kind of profile this. And uh, the time spent in the ioctal actually just kind of grows with that shape. Uh, as you add more than like 64 threads, it just gets very, very slow. And what Perf showed us was that a lot of this time is being spent in some spin locks. And in particular, user fault FD has a spin lock for uh, waiting threads. So when you handle a user fault, so the first time the vCPU touches memory that's not present, it has to add its 
thread object to a wait queue, and that requires getting a spin lock. And then when, it, when you read it from user space to read the notification, it has to read from the queue and it gets a spin lock. And then when you try to copy the memory back into the process, it has to wake up a thread and it gets a spin lock again to find the thread in the wait queue. And so when you start adding lots of threads faulting and the vCPU threads are, are fixed, like we have this, we offer this VM that has a certain number of vCPUs and we can't really change that. So that's fixed. And then if we chart to add more user space threads to copy memory in, uh, the lock contention gets, gets very, very bad. Uh, and so this was this diagram from earlier, but you kind of see that like a, a lot of this path has to go through this one spin lock. And uh, so to sum summarize anyway, so the number of VCPs is fixed. And if you only have one thread trying to copy memory in, it's not sufficient for the memory bandwidth you need. And if you add more threads, this causes lock contention and negates potential for this throughput improvement. And it drives CPU usage really high. Uh, the, this is the percentage of, uh, of the total execution time that was just spent in the spin lock function. The more threads you add, it just gets close to like 90% of the time you're spending waiting on a spin lock and you're using 160 times as much CPU. So, um, so uh, some next steps. Uh, you know, I haven't, so I haven't written a solution to this yet. Uh, uh, and so uh, there's many potential solutions. Um, might be potentially straightforward to shard the lock, shard by faulting address or something else. We might be able to write a lock-free implementation, but Lock for implementations are hard and complex and uh, just make these types of scaling problems more subtle sometimes. Um, some other ideas that I'd be interested in if people have other ideas, but about creating multiple user fault FDs and trying to use you know, many of them on different regions and avoiding locks like that. Um, but all of these things will have other trade-offs and I haven't done enough, enough testing to have any like clear this is the solution results, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, at the same time, this is not the be all end all, like this is the scaling problem. Uh, this is only one spin lock and it's only one bottleneck and bottlenecks are very uh, nested and they, they like to hide behind other bottlenecks and you remove one and you find three more. And as I mentioned a minute earlier, the, the MMU spin lock has been the, the uh, great enemy of, of our implementation and that we don't have this wait queue spin lock, but we start hitting this MMU spin lock and it scales basically just as poorly when you get to hundreds of CPUs. Um, one of my colleagues somewhere is working on a prototype to, to try to eliminate this spin lock, which was on one of the graphs earlier, but uh, that seems promising as well. But it's almost certain that once we find that, you know, there's, there's going to be something else. And uh, adding this many CPUs is just a hard problem. And uh, this is making VMs very, very large just brings other problems that are not even necessarily related to uh, parallelism by just problems related to having a lot of memory. Um, for instance, uh, with user fault FD, uh, the page fault path uh, for the like guest virtual memory areas are tied into the demand paging. And so you can't, for instance, mmap the region and, and mlock it and populate it and have all the page tables set up and then do demand paging at, say, the EPT level. Uh, you, you still have the, the Linux mm page faulting going on. And so this adds some latency. Uh, I haven't measured exactly how much latency, but um, it puts it on the vCPU critical path. And uh, at the point where you're scaling to terabytes of memory and hundreds of CPUs, getting as much stuff out of the, the critical path of vCPU execution is, becomes really important because uh, you don't have much margins uh, and you're really starting to stretch limits of everything. Uh, another problem, although we were talking about this in the hallway earlier today, is 
the backing memory uh, page table sizes. And since user vault FD operates at the, the like file system or system page table levels, you can't have like one gigabyte EPT mappings or one gigabyte mappings on the file, on the memory file, and then do demand paging at a four kilobyte level unless you're using like the right type of memory file system. And uh, there's some ideas on how we, this could be done, but uh, it's, it's currently not, not working perfectly. Uh, but so where do I plan to go with this? I plan to kind of continue investigating this performance and trying to get it down to where it's, it's works really well for these big sizes and is something that uh, like Google can use and that we can develop these things and do them upstream first and not have to end up in this problem where we have some proprietary thing that we're trying to rebase and it's maintenance and we're not being really good community participants. And, but I also want to continue to push limits of VM scalability and see how big we can make VMs and how performant we can make those big VMs and all the challenges that will, will come with that. Uh, thanks, that's all I have. If anybody has any questions. Hi, thanks. Can you hear? Okay. Thanks for the great presentation. So, <clears throat> uh, there's uh, one big issue which was not mentioned, which was uh, uh, wake one or wake all behavior, because uh, the current implementation in QEMU is uh, uh, doing you know things uh, only with one thread, and so the moment you put more UFF DIO and you have to do that from multiple CPUs to make it scale, because it looks like your proprietary implementation actually did exactly that, uh, uh, scaling by copying memory from multiple CPUs. So. Uh, when, when you actually add more threads doing UFFDO, it matters a lot how you listen for the new uh, user fault of the events coming. And currently in the kernel, the upstream kernel, even if you do blocking read, uh, and even if you do poll, which are the two ways to listen for events, uh, you're going to get a wake all event. So every user fault coming in wakes up all the threads waiting, which are going to hit all on the same spin lock. So I think there will be just a nice improvement by just using wake one, and the patch to do that is trivial for the blocking reads. Not so trivial for the ball, mm. unfortunately. Uh, so, but if, if you use blocking reads, we can fix that. And so definitely we should work on optimizing this. So I think it's, uh, it's, great, yeah. uh, it's a great analysis. Thanks a lot. To that too, I, I, that was one of the things I did try, but I, I didn't really mention, because I tried uh, to pull from a bunch of threads but uh, it's exactly what you said, and so that the, all the threads get woken up on every event, and then they just race to the read, and it doesn't really, it doesn't scale. Um, to, to add a little bit about the, what our implementation does is, it, every time a vCPU, so we, we mark the pages demanded in the EPT, uh, in a KVM data structure, a bitmap, and we trap on accesses to the EPT, and then take a VM exit and ex the vCPU thread exits from the run ioctal, and then in the user space handler from that loop, it just says, oh, I exited because memory was not present, and the vCPU thread itself goes and fetches the memory and installs it, so you sort of automatically get parallelism by numbers of CPUs. Um, but yeah, the, I, didn't, I didn't try doing blocking reads, but, but you're saying that blocking reads today don't, don't support no, wake true. ones, though. okay. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody else have other questions, comments? Thank you. Uh, my question is about the poster copy, you know. Uh, What's the rollback uh, situation that the poster copy support? Can you repeat that? What? Well, I mean, uh, the rollback. The rollback? When when do poster copy live migration? How to do the rollback pro, uh, situation? Like, so if you have to cancel the migration? Is that what you mean? Mm, but uh, poster copy 
呃，看的，读的 ，in the in the social side， 是 ，you can't know you can't know the memory if you use post copy situation. It's not the, like the pre copy. Yeah. You can cancel the right migration. Yeah, I'm not. So I, I, I think if I like, am I understanding your question? You're asking how can you roll back or cancel a migration yeah. once you've started doing post copy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know that that. I don't, I don't actually have an answer for that. I, I don't know that it's actually possible with. I don't, so I don't know how Queemie works. So it might be to do it. I don't know that we do this, but uh, I think it might be once you've hit a certain point, you're kind of committed to to finishing it, and if. If you get to the point where you're running on the target, and like the source crashes, the machine blows up or something, and the vCPU tries to access memory, you go to copy it from the source, and the source is gone. Uh, you know, like if this happens in GCE, your VM will just die because we don't want to corrupt guest memory, and there's nothing else you can do if the memory is gone. Uh, so I think once you hit the the blackout point, once you hit where you're running on the target, you've kind of hit a point of no return. Like you then have to complete. The migration. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question? But if nobody has anything else, uh, thank you for listening, and I hope this was informative. And